サーの提供でお送りします。What's up, dudes and dudes? Welcome back to my channel. As always, it's me here, yours truly, OG, the Osaga Ghoul. And today I'm going to be reviewing a brand new anime original series by Netflix called Agretsugo or Aggressive Retsugo. And this is not to be confused with the 2016 version, which has the same exact name and also is done by the same studio called Fanworks. But the difference is that the 2016 version is 100 episodes long, and each of the episodes are like one minute. And I assume that it's a lot more episodic skits rather than this over, overarching story that goes through the 100 episodes. And the Netflix version has a bit of like an ongoing character development and story through the 10 episodes, which are 15 minutes long of each. And also, there's a bit different characters between the two shows. And the voice actors are a bit different. And I would also say the Netflix version is a bit more higher quality, I would say. I think it's like better animated. And there's a bit more detail in some of the scenes and the animation. But that's pretty much the rundown of the two. And also, in case you happen to enjoy the Netflix one, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't enjoy the 2016 version as well. But let's talk about what is this show exactly about. So. Retsuko is a character、uh, created by the company called Sanrio, and you must have heard about Hello Kitty.、Uh, this is the company which was behind it. They have also done、uh, some other characters, which you may have seen if you are closely watching anime and stuff. These are may not as big as brands as Hello Kitty outside of Japan, but very popular in Japan as well. And Retsuko is just kind of like the newest character on the brand, which was created in. 2016 by an artist called Yeti. And pretty much,、um, Retsuko is this 25 year old female、uh, red panda which works at a white collar job as an accountant and gets to deal with a lot of the shit on that job, working overtime,、uh, the other co workers bullying her and making her to do all this fucking crazy work. And then there's like a misogynist boss who is a Pig, by the way,、um, <laughs> kind of intentionally chosen to be a pig. And then there is some other co workers which are, you know, friends to Retsuko. And the kind of the she she has also this big secret, which is she is really into death metal. So after the she's kind of like suppressing all of these feelings that she feels towards the her bosses and co workers when they kind of abuse her with work. And then she goes out to the karaoke bar and vents on by, you know, doing some death metal singing with her own lyrics, obviously,、uh, about the things. And that's pretty much like the, the, the whole thing. And then her like, face and appearance kind of changes all, all of a sudden from this very cute, shy girl to this very <laughs> aggressive character. And in case you have watched my channel before, Or have watched Detroit Metal City. This is like the, the PG version of Detroit Metal City. This is like exactly the same thing. This is actually Zootopia meets Detroit Metal City. Th- that would be a Gretzico. It's literally the same setting. And it's not really a bad thing, even if copies a bit of Detroit Metal City. There's a bit of a different context in where. In Detroit Metal City, the main character plays in death metal and does a lot of this edgy shit, but in reality, he's this sort of a shy guy and he just kind of loses all the control and stuff, but he doesn't really want to do that stuff. And there's a bit, bit of like some similarities there, and obviously some notable differences between the two, but I'm, I'm definitely positive that there is some DMC、um, influences on this character. It must have been because, I mean, it was a. You know, a semi, it has been adapted into a movie and an anime, so I don't know how much the manga sold, but there is definitely a connection between the two. And as I probably said earlier,、uh, there's 10 episodes, which each of are like 15 minutes, and it kind of starts out with like、uh, the pilot episode is about kind of exploring who Retsuko is and her, you know, singing hobby, and then it kind of progresses towards on. Retsuko kind of、um, thinking、uh, what to do with her life, just a bit of like a crisis and stuff. And you know, and then there's some、um, other characters who get involved 
which will be playing a big bigger part, especially these two characters, which won't be unnamed because I don't want to spoil that stuff, I guess. But there is uh, like a, like once again, I've talked about this in a lot that Netflix has this bit of a trick that always display their drama shows as comedies in the trailer. Like in the when I looked the trailer, it looked very very fun show. And it looks like a comedy, but it is a comedy show. But uh, there is a, a there's a romance element in this series, especially in the latter half. There is a definite key influence of romance elements there. It gets a bit serious, actually. I mean, I didn't really laugh during the show. It was very enjoyable from start to finish. But I don't really view it as maybe as like a pure comedy. It's more like the dramedy levels, especially towards the end. And um, there will be a love interest or two, perhaps for Retsuko and other characters in, in the show. And uh, that, that's really what's the beauty of it. And that really comes down to the Zootopia thing. Once you have finished the show, you will exactly know what I'm talking about when I refer to Zootopia. Not just the animals, but the, especially the connection between two specific characters. And I enjoyed, I think the style of this show is... Uh, a bit different, it's been more modest and simplistic uh, and compared to a lot of the other animes that I watched in the past. And I think it's, um, in terms of its humor, it's not so much on the Japanese style. And it's something that can be applied to maybe more like an international humor. That this is probably a really, really good gateway anime, so to speak. So getting people who don't really watch anime normally probably watching anime, this could be you know, one of type of, type of one of those type of shows because watching I watched a lot of anime comedies before and a lot of the quirks and generic things that they you know pant shots and all that shit uh, that that is not something that you will be seeing in this anime. So it is a lot more like a Western humor. Obviously, there are some key important things you have to understand about the Japanese society, how women are treated on the workplace. And these obviously play a part in the show and a bit of its humor, like because these are kind of stereotypes. And so other than that, it is a type of a show that I think the Western audience will like. Obviously, there's a lot of like fashion accessories and like snapbacks even I watched today and a lot of like stuff you can find on eBay and probably going to be doubling, tripling after people see this, see this show and uh, getting in love with the characters. And the cute aspect is probably why a lot of people watch it. I could definitely see that. And it gets the romance aspect is really that kind of, kind of got a bit of a cliffhanger in the end, to be honest. Um, there's definitely a possibility for season two. It can be treated as um, season like, a, like it's exclusive on one season thing. But I hope it's going to be season two. Let's hope it's going to be popular because... Um, it definitely, I should watch the 2016 version and maybe I will and review it as well. Um, but, but the thing is that I'm not sure how much material is there and how much like actual stories you can create. It's a bit of a, yeah, so you have to see like how much you can actually milk out of it, all the setting, because there are like certain things which are very simplistic and you can only do them a certain amount of times. Um, and a bit about some of the aesthetics and stuff like that. Um, there were some, like, good music clips in the show, like a bit of karaoke, obviously, um, not really big fan of the opening song, the ED was good, um, there's, well, the soundtrack, there's not really a lot of music playing on the background of the show, it's kind of non-existent, to be honest, but these, some of these, um, <laughs> few karaoke moments, um, these, these were really good, actually, and they kind of, like, up the bar for me, that for the for the whole soundtrack, so to speak. And the animation, I already kind of touched upon that a bit. I think it was good. Uh, it was detailed and it has its own unique style and it's kind of blending a bit of 3D with 2D in an interesting way without making, without not making it look like Berserk 2013. <laughs> so I think that was successful. But overall, I think it was a good anime. Maybe I was expecting to be a more comedy-esque. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not minding the romance elements in the show. But, you know, it was cute. It's not really that long. 15 minutes per episode. So that's 10, 115 minutes total. That's not long. It's like a, it's like more like a length of a movie. But I enjoyed it. You know, if you want to see more reviews, perhaps the 2016 version. 
uh, stay tuned for the channel. Make sure you subscribe and like. And you can find my videos on DTube now. So there will be always a backup videos there because you never know what YouTube is going to do. You know, block the videos and so on. And um, also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and check out my website, osagogool.com. I will see you guys next time on the next video. Cheers.